Today we're talking about some Tesla news, including confirmed Model Y design changes, new streaming services coming to Teslas, Tesla hitting delivery goals, as well as a Tesla app store possibly on its way. So let's get into it. First up today we have a report from Tesla hacker at GreenTheOnly on Twitter who found that in the Chinese local manual for the Model Y, there is a confirmation of Tesla adding the HEPA filter and bioweapon defense mode to the Model Y. Bioweapon defense mode is a feature that the Model S and Model X have that they left off of the Model 3 and Y due to space. However, the Model Y is actually large enough that it should have enough space for it, and it looks like the new manual confirms that the Model Y from China will indeed have it. The Model Y has just recently begun production in China, and the HEPA filter has been rumored for a while in the Model Y. It looks like Tesla is planning to add the HEPA filter to the Model Y in the US sometime in the near future, and they went ahead and just jumped the gun to include it in the Made in China Model Y, since they are starting from scratch with that assembly line. This makes sense so that in China they don't have to go in and retool in a few weeks or months whenever the Model Y gets the HEPA filter in the US. The line from the manual for this China-made Model Y says, quote, if your Model Y is equipped with the medical grade HEPA filter, this filter ensures the best quality air inside the cabin whenever the climate control system is on and outside air is entering the cabin. Now you'll notice that the manual actually does mention the Model 3 as well as the Model Y, but at Green they only said that there's actually a block around it to note that it is only for the Model Y. If we compare to the US owner's manual, you'll see no mention of a HEPA filter. All this to say, it looks like the Made in China Model Y is most likely getting the HEPA filter from day one, and that's pretty good confirmation that it will be coming soon to the US. Next up, we have a leaked email from Elon somewhat confirming that their goal of 500 thousand deliveries this year is within reach. The email starts with Elon saying, quote, after today we have just five days to go to achieve the historic milestone of 500,000 cars built and delivered. Please go all out to make this happen. This is a great milestone to rally the company around achieving. All the critics who, as recently as two years ago, said that we'd never make it, also called our target of a half million in 2020 impossible. The heck with them, we are doing it. Tesla has had this goal for the entire year, and of course they had a significant setback when their factory shut down towards the beginning of the year. One thing that most likely helped a lot with this goal was the release of the Model Y, which has already become extremely popular, and is the perfect car for people who wanted a Model 3, but needed a little more space, like me. We'll hear soon if they were able to achieve it, but one move that seems interesting when trying to deliver the most cars is that they actually shut down the Model S and X production lines during this time. Most people think this signals a Model S refresh coming next year, but it could just be a simple shutdown to allow employees time off and focus all of their efforts on the Model 3 and Model Y, which they clearly produce in the highest volume. Focusing on those cars could help most with their goal of 500,000 cars delivered in 2020. Tesla is always hard at work on a million different things. They're of course focused on their cars, but they're also focused on battery production, home energy, solar panels, and the big one lately, full self-driving. Elon took to Twitter this week to talk about the new holiday software update. Overall, the update is not nearly as exciting as people had hoped, and the new user interface leaves much to be desired. I talked in my last video about how the placement of the new interface kind of looks like an error, and really doesn't improve at all on what we've had over the past few years. And it seems like Elon agrees. He responded to Ben Solons on Twitter, posting about the Model S UI, and said, quote, We need a UI overhaul. Now Elon could just be talking about the Model S here, because in this update there's a lot of blank space in the instrument cluster, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if he's talking about all of their cards, because placement just does not make sense on how it is in the Model 3 and Model Y right now after this update. Now you're free to disagree, of course, and let me know in the comments below how you feel about this new update. Hopefully they will be changing it soon, or at the very least give us an option to choose which layout we want. Elon somewhat confirmed this in a tweet saying, quote, we will offer multiple display options. So overall, the update definitely wasn't two fire emojis as Elon stated it would be, but they added three new games. One particular feature I noted is that you have the ability to have a passenger play the game while the driver is driving. Although technically all you have to do is press the I'm a passenger button and you can play while driving. Please do not do this, but it is a taste of the future and Elon tweeted about it saying, quote, entertainment will be critical when cars drive themselves. Putting aside all arguments against full self-driving and against Tesla's efforts, this does seem like a pretty obvious future, and Tesla is smart to start heading in that direction. We know full self-driving will be achieved at some point, and that Elon thinks this will be very, very soon. Once it's here and at level five, you'll be bored sitting in stop and go traffic, and you'll want built-in entertainment. The games they added were Solitaire, Cat Quest, and The Battle of Polytopia. 
all pretty simple games, but they add to quite a long list of games Tesla's now have, including Fallout Shelter, Stardew Valley, and a few more. One feature customers have wanted for a while that we should be seeing soon is Apple Music and Amazon Music integration. Currently, Teslas come with Slacker, Spotify, and TuneIn integration. As I said, they are integrated, so they use Tesla's own integration and their own version of these apps. For example, until recently, Spotify didn't even have a homepage or gapless playback, and those were just added recently, even though, as we can see, it's still the Tesla version of the Spotify home screen. Well, it looks like we could see a slew of new sources coming soon. At Green, the only confirmed some new sources showing up in software such as Apple Music, Amazon Music, Audible, Pandora, and Tidal. The reason these come slowly is because Tesla insists on integrating instead of using something like Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. While it's exciting for Apple Music customers to hopefully get integration soon, it begs the question, why, if Tesla can put all these games in their cars, doesn't Tesla just make a Tesla App Store? An app store would allow these companies to make their own apps for Tesla, they'd be better optimized for the services themselves, and they'd be pre-approved by Tesla to be downloaded on their app store. Since Teslas are so software-based, this is absolutely not out of the question, and there's actually evidence that Tesla is indeed working on it. In the middle of last year, Elon said, quote, in order for it to be worthwhile for somebody to write an app, there has to be enough of an install base to warrant the effort. Even if you're going to port something, it's still got to be worth the effort. As our number of vehicles grow, it starts to potentially make more sense to develop games and other applications for Tesla. We just need a lot more cars. Well, as we talked about earlier, Tesla will likely be hitting 500,000 cars delivered this year. And they're currently building their Texas factory and Berlin factory to be up and running in 2021. On top of those factories making more Model Ys, we will also see the Cybertruck come to production, which has just under a million pre-orders. So their vehicle fleet will be expanding rapidly and the App Store will start to make more and more sense. One very interesting clue is that Tesla already has a dedicated subdomain for an App Store. If you go to apps.tesla.com, it shows a login page that says, warning, please use a mobile device to download Tesla apps. When you proceed to log in, it brings you to Tesla's normal authentication page and then brings you back to an error. Or at least for me, I'm assuming someone can actually log into that, but you probably have to work at Tesla. The same thing also happens when you go to mobile.tesla.com on a mobile device. Now, having subdomains isn't much evidence, but having a warning that says the phrase Tesla apps in it definitely looks like they're working on something. Since the Model 3 was released, Tesla has added a number of games, a number of streaming services, as well as Spotify. All of those are great for customers, but as I've noted in the past, some of them run pretty rough in the car. Netflix, for example, is a chore to do any sort of browsing with. Once your video plays, you're good to go, but this app, as well as YouTube and Hulu, run the slowest of any device those services are available on. On top of this, while I've praised the new Spotify updates, I was praising it because I use Spotify a lot and the Tesla version was missing features that Spotify has on literally every other device, including just visiting the website. Tesla has to put in some work to develop these music integrations, as well as port these games to run properly on the car. At this point, it seems like they could save a lot of time and energy and improve on all of these apps by just opening up their SDK to developers and having the companies make the apps themselves. Spotify can have a team dedicated to making a great Spotify experience in a Tesla. Tesla approves the app and users get a much better experience. Netflix can have a dedicated team making a great Netflix experience in a Tesla. Tesla approves the app and users get a far better experience than is currently included. On top of this, Tesla can make these apps cost money the same way Apple and Google do with their app stores. Tesla takes a percentage off the top, earns that revenue, and the user gets a much more customized and optimized experience. So there are apps that developers would want to add. First of all are all the services you would expect on your TV. Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, Disney+, Apple TV+, ESPN, or even live TV. With a growing number of Tesla owners and a possibility of a full self-driving future with a need for entertainment, we know these companies will happily make these apps for Tesla. On the audio side, we could have much better dedicated apps from services like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Tidal, Audible, SoundCloud, and much more. Now those would all be free because you pay for those services, but some apps I would expect to be very popular and worth the cost to most owners, including things like screen mirroring apps, to-do lists and productivity apps, calendar apps, and a big one for many Tesla owners, stock trading apps. 
Those would be in addition to a slew of paid games I'm sure we'd see if Tesla were to make this app store. If we just look through the top paid apps on the Apple App Store, we can see a ton of things owners would love to have installed on their car, especially if it's driving itself. The main reason Tesla hasn't done this yet is due to what Elon mentioned earlier. There are going to be certain limitations because companies won't want to develop an app for Tesla if they only have a certain number of cars. But also, companies won't want to develop an app or game for Tesla if their users can only truly use the app when parked. This will significantly limit the amount of people who actually buy an app developed for Tesla if they realize that they're only going to play this app when they're charging every once in a while on the road. This is why Tesla is waiting for more cars, but also waiting for true level 5 autonomy to put this app store out. For a full app store you can launch in your Tesla and download hundreds of apps from, I imagine it'll be a little while, but I do think Tesla could greatly benefit from opening up their platform for entertainment services to develop apps for it. They could come pre-installed or maybe Tesla could create a Tesla app store within the Tesla app where you choose from 20 or so services to have in your car or not. This would allow all of these services like Spotify and Netflix to greatly improve and give customers many more options for entertainment while Tesla actually ends up doing less work in the process. They don't have to make their own Spotify integration, then Apple Music integration, then throw Netflix in and all of that. They would just put up the SDK, work with the companies, approve the apps, and everybody wins. As we saw, Tesla is putting the pieces in place for an app store, so it's looking good for this in the near future. The real question is whether or not the current internal computer could handle an app store and the downloading of many more apps in the car. Judging by the way certain apps run and the way Netflix runs, it does seem like there is a limit to what could be added with the current computer, but at the same time most of the core components of the car run incredibly well on screen. So it could just be that when someone is focused on an app running well on a Tesla, it can do so. And for the time being, putting something like Netflix on a Tesla really hasn't been their priority, and as long as it runs, that's okay. While I have had issues with games crashing, overall they run remarkably well once you're in them, and that's kind of exactly the same what it's like on a smartphone today. I just imagine storage becoming an issue, so hopefully the internal computer can handle any apps from the Tesla App Store, and an SSD plugged in via USB could hold your third-party apps so you don't run out of space. The future will tell, and while Tesla has planned for their current cars to achieve full self-driving, there is very much a possibility that future owners need a computer upgrade, much like the MCU2 upgrade in the Model S. At some point, newer Teslas could get an updated internal computer with more storage to properly handle a Tesla App Store. Tesla is known to do retrofits for features, but at some point there's going to be something that significantly dates your Tesla, and an App Store could be it. But speaking of Tesla getting outdated, a huge factor going forward will be battery tech. Tesla unveiled their 4680 battery cells that they are planning to produce at their own plant in the near future. These cells give six times the power, five times the energy, and increase the range by 16% over what that equivalent amount of energy would have gotten you in the past. Tesla talked about their plans to build their own plants, but we just got a report that Panasonic will also be producing Tesla's new cells for them. We knew Tesla would be using suppliers, but we didn't know that their suppliers would be making this new cell design. An article from Nikkei Asia says, quote, Panasonic will set up a prototype production line at existing facilities. The cost of the project is expected to run into the tens of millions of dollars. Though Tesla plans to make the new cell itself, battery industry watchers expect it will be difficult for the automaker to handle all of the production on its own. Panasonic will seek a future partnership to take on some of the manufacturing. This is a big development because this means Tesla could move entirely to these 4680 cells even sooner than we had imagined. After battery day, most people thought that Tesla would probably keep their current designs and only use the 4680 cells in their newer cars when they need to in order to achieve a longer range in cars like the Semi, Roadster, and Cybertruck. That will likely remain the case for the time being, but now that Panasonic is planning to build these cells as well, it could move much faster than previously thought, and we could see a Model 3 with 4680 cells and a 400 mile range sooner than we thought. Last up today, we got an interesting photo of a Model Y with some imaging equipment mounted to the top. It has a Tesla manufacturer's license plate, so we know that it is Tesla. The real question is what is it for? I actually saw a Model S with similar equipment at a supercharger earlier this year, and that same car was spotted in Palo Alto. The most common speculation is that this is a way for Tesla to optimize full self-driving for taller cars, like the upcoming Cybertruck. They could be collecting camera data at higher vantage points while not needing to actually drive around the Cybertruck and attract a bunch of attention. On top of this, we can see LiDAR on the top of the car. 
This makes some people think that Tesla has changed their mind and realize they need LiDAR to properly achieve full self-driving. But since Elon continues to be adamant about LiDAR being a dumb idea for full self-driving, this could be a way for Tesla to test and validate that their camera data truly is superior to LiDAR. 2020 is coming to an end, finally. And full self-driving isn't here yet. Elon tends to be late, but he also tends to deliver what he promises. So 2021 should be an incredible year for Tesla. For a full breakdown of what I expect in 2021, you can check out my video linked up here or in the description below. And I'd also like to thank everyone for watching this channel this year and for all the support. Seriously, thank you all so much. If you're not already, make sure you're subscribed to this channel to stay up to date on all the videos I'll be bringing out throughout 2021. Make sure to like this video if you appreciated it. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ryan Tech. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.